This next one, Jim, was sent to cornydrivethrough at gmail.com from Darm in Vancouver, Canada. From who? Darm. D-A-R-M. D-H-A-R-M. Well, that's that darn Darm. Here's his question. And he says, many thanks for the podcast. So let's be nice to him, Jim. Okay. All all right, Darm. Thank you. You're welcome. A quick question. Do you think there's a better way to fill out an arena for shows where the hard cam side is tarped off or only has a few fans sitting in that section? The reason I ask is that many of the weekly wrestling shows are flat. If wrestlers in the ring are working for the cameras, the live audience might get bored because they're stuck watching people's backs. In turn, the audience at home turns out because of a boring presentation. (laughs) Well, I actually, I'm just, there was a couple of times in, in WCW during the last year, me and the Midnight Express were there when it was the TV tapings, especially some of them were brutal, right? And they would leave the entire hard camera side, um, you know, uh, empty because they wanted all the people across from the camera where you could see them, which I've done the same thing on my tapings. Of course, I wasn't running a multi-million dollar company. But we used to specifically, I would especially, working the ringside, I'd turn to the empty side of the arena and scream and yell at those people like there were people there. (laughs) And you shut up too! And I'm pointing up at these giant, vast, empty seats. Unless you can fill the building up that you're in, you have to kind of do it that way. But the problem is, is that the guys in the WWE specifically are taught to work the camera side at the expense of the live audience. It's like they're eavesdroppers and they're not really in on it. I always, whenever I was doing a live interview or in any company, but the WWF, some in the WWF, but more in other places. Cause I've mentioned in the WWF, especially when, when Vince was still hosting the show and he would be doing the interviews and I'd be in there with me and Vader or me and the bulldog or me and Yoko and Fuji, whatever. He's holding the microphone. That's fine. He's the interviewer. But the floor camera guy would get right up in the ring and right up in our face to get that close up. And I wouldn't be able to look out at the people and the fans. The cameraman was blocking my view. And I always like to, even though I'm, you know, doing the promo I'm going to do, I like to see what the reaction is. I like to be able to see people. I, I just, it was it was bothersome to me to have that cameraman in my way. They didn't do that in WCW. They didn't do it in Crockett. They didn't do it in other promotions. And of course you never saw that because as the director being a, you know, the WWF got great directors. He would tell the floor guy, okay, back out. And as he'd back out, then he would take the hard camera shot. You'd never see the floor camera guy in the, in the picture, but he was right up your face. And that used to throw me the fuck off just because I like to be able to gesture, move my arms, see the people, etc. But I would, doing a live interview in the ring, I would wander around. I would turn and I would see and I'd gesture to the people on one side of me or the people on the other side of me. You try to bring them all in so that the, the live audience, as well as your audience at home, it feels like they're involved in it. The audience at home is lucky. They only see what's across from the camera, so they don't see the whole empty side of the building unless the director and or the cameramen are inexperienced or not very good, in which case they'll shoot off into the empty seats and you'll see it. But the people at home are supposed to think all those seats are filled. So you have to work toward that direction for the camera, but you've also got to include the people in the in the in the arena live. And that's what I always try to do to the best of my ability, even when I was rooted to a spot because of a tight camera shot or whatever. So is there a better way of doing it now? Well, I mean, there's what kind of budget you got for the average, you know, indie show. No, you need a hard camera to follow. I always used to uh, tell the, 
inexperienced camera people that we might get in OVW or Ring of Honor or wherever it was on a budget, if all else fails post to post, that's your hard camera shot. And if if it's a tag team match, you might want to widen out a little bit past the post because you want to see the guys on the aprons. And if they go out on the floor, we're going to have a little bit of notice of that and we can cover it with the floor cameras, but your hard camera shots, your insurance shot, if it's just locked down and post to post, you got the whole ring, whatever happens in the ring, at least you'll get some kind of shot of it. I mean, there's ways you can play with the hard camera. Do you put it up a little higher? Do you keep it on the more toward the same level as the ring? There's pluses and drawbacks to each of those angles. You've got to have at least two floor cameras. And there's only so many places you can put those. If you've got a budget, you can have a a um, a couple more floors and pay a couple more camera guys so you can ISO some things. You can tell one of those floor guys, hey, just concentrate on so-and-so's facial expression. Or if you've got a boom, you can do those nice sweeping boom shots of your big building. But if you ain't got a big building, a boom makes it look like you're trying to make a closet look fucking fancy. So it it just depends. There's there's different ways to shoot different buildings that you can come up with, but overall, you know, it, it, the shooting of the wrestling show is not necessarily the problem these days. It's what's being shot, and the fact that some of the people coming up with what's being shot should be shot. That's the problem. 